Hi guys, I'm Stuart. I'm Alan. Together we are Outdoor. Basics. Cool. Um, so today we're out on our third overnighter uh, with the Outdoor Basics team in, in our camp. Um, and we've got loads done today. We've been like doing natural cordage and all sorts of stuff. It's been a laugh. Really cool, eh? Good laugh. Yeah. Um, only thing we wanted to do really in this video, well there's a couple of things we want to do in this video, but the first thing we're going to do is uh, talk about a, a change in my kit or kit, how we're going to do things um, and I've actually reverted back to something that I've done for the military um, and I'm going to talk about it now. So what I've did, all this is, is a heavily mod modified uh, British military Bergen, it's just had loads and loads done to it but it's not what I'm talking about. In the top pouch here, what I've got is a scout pack, Dave Canterbury calls it a scout pack and it's very similar to a military sort of military mentality in the top of your Bergen military guys carry their day sack um, and they would leave their Bergen in the harbour or wherever they are and they would use their, their day sack for kind of patrolling or, or wrecking around or whatever um, wearing their webbing and stuff but I don't want to be wearing webbing and that I'm not in the military anymore um, so I, I kind of went for a, a more of a bushcrafty civilian type way of doing it um, and in this massive top pouch I can fit what Dave Canterbury calls a kind of scout pack and I just like that so let's just get this Bergen out of the way in fact I'll sit on it it'd be great the reason I went back to this was last weekend I had my wife out bushcrafting with us and we kind of went walking around and she fell and hurt her shoulder it was nothing, it was absolutely nothing she was fine but I thought to myself what have I got because we were quite far away from camp we were far away from camp and I'd left all my kit in camp bar a bandage and, and my phone and I thought yeah it's okay but it's not really good enough what if she was actually hurted and I had to kind of like sort her out here while we waited and help coming I wouldn't want to have to run the two miles back to camp and try and get stuff while I'm waiting and help so I decided to go back to my kind of day sack slash scout pack mentality um, so let's just talk about briefly what I have in here um, and, 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 and why, I, why I've got it First things first, um, I've got water in a clean canteen uh, bottle and the Pathfinder cup and cook a uh, wee mini cooker that can go on a fire or whatever. Um, why have I got this? Obvious reasons to hydrate. Stay hydrated, you know, if you get dehydrated, is it a 10% uh, dehydration leads to like 25% mm. reduction in performance right. or something? Um, but just being hydrated is the future. Um, <laughs> so it's what you kind of need to love. Aye, you need it, aye. Um, but also, what, what I can do is if somebody did fall and get a, a laceration or whatever, is I can clean it out with, with this water, because I know it's clean water, and have a look at what's actually happened and make a decision for there. Um, and I, I, I can make some scran. I can make scran, drink, and if I have to, uh, clean a wound out and, and get an, ac an, an accurate assessment of the situation. Um, cool. Okay, next, what have I got? Tinder pouch. Um, I've covered what's in my Tinder pouch before. All the usual suspects. Fatwood, you know, jute twine, charcloth, all that sort of stuff. Because if I did get caught short, I was too far away from camp, I couldn't make it back. Or I decided to stop if, say, you know, we're out, somebody falls into some water, we're a couple of miles away from camp. I can stop, get a fire on the go and sort them out. Um, really, really simple. Next. It's more of a personal choice for me, this is just something that I like to have as a, it's in a, a Gore-Tex stuff sack, as a micro fleece. Because like I say, if you fall, hurt yourself, or if you just need to stop because you're done in, um, your core body temperature can drop, you can go into a bit of shock. So having a micro fleece, able to just bang it on, you can regulate your core temperature better. And if somebody's cold and a bit miserable and you get their core temperature up, they start to feel better, things don't seem as bad. Next, I've got a shemag, um, a million uses for a shemag. First and foremost, somebody's freezing, whatever, I can combine that with a micro fleece and, and, and bang the shemag round as a scarf and or hat um, and their core temperature is going to come back up, they're going to immediately start feeling better, get some water in them and all that sort of stuff. What I can also do with this shemag is I can turn it into a triangular bandage, I can use it to immobilise any mechanical injuries, and also, the minute you open my sterile wound dressing anyway, it isn't sterile anymore. So if somebody got a laceration, I could get it out and get it on it. 
um, and, and help myself out that way. M loads of uses. Also, um, if I, I had to refill my water bottle for a stream, I could bang this over the top and use it as initial filtration to keep all the big particles out before I boil my water up. So, I mean, loads of uses, loads of uses. Simple sweat rag. Um, Manage core temperature, all the good things. Really, really good bits of kit. So, where did I put that? I'll put that just really quickly back in here. Next, I've got my survival pouch. I don't really have a survival tin because I can't really fit enough in it, but what I do have is a, a survival pouch. Yeah? And I've got loads in this. It's mental how much I've actually got in all these different bits and bobs. If anybody's interested, bang it in the comments and I'll do a separate. I'll do a separate video on this because I've got so much stuff in this. Um, it's a survival pouch, not a tin. Cool. Next, uh, what I have is the, the old um, eye kit, like kit sheets. What is it kit individual protection? A uh, waterproof kind of sheet. I can bang up a temporary, a temporary shelter. Yeah, um, in case there's any sort of situation, or I can just use it as a general ground sit mat. Cheapest chips and it doesn't really matter what happens to it. And it's nice and simple, just sits flat in the bottom. Bang. In the front bit, inside, that's just done buttons, and I've got a few more bits and bobs in here. First thing I've got is another bandage. I, I have one in my pocket as well. Uh, uh, just a general first field dressing, there's really bandage, whatever you want to call it. Worth their weight in gold. Tinder, I suppose, you know, what it's meant for, wound dressing, loads of stuff. Um, I suppose you could use it to aid in water filtration if you had to, but why you would, I don't know. Um, just loads of uses on it. Generally, when people get cut up or hurt, it never comes in ones. Do you know what I mean? You'll fall and split your head open there, you'll land on your arm and poke a bone out there. There'll be loads of them, so you'll have multiple things. You know, and always plan for the worst, but hope for the best. Mm -hmm. So I've got a few bandages and stuff like that on me um, uh, to deal with what I can. Next, um, I've got a survival sleeping bag and it's not a blanket, it's a sleeping bag they can get inside it and it's bright orange. So if somebody does again get a bad injury, start getting into shock, I can get them in this, regulate their core body temperature and it's a massive bright orange object. It's much easier for people to find me and at a push I could knock up another shelter out of it or just a big massive signalling device to draw attention to where I am. So, again, sleeping bag, bingo bango, that is what it says in the tin, but also emergency signalling device and or shelter. Great back here. Paracord, shelters, whatever, loads and loads of uses, loads of uses. A spare ferrocium rod to go with my tinder kit. But, a lighter. I have this in my pocket anyway, but this is kind of a standalone kit. A lighter, because like I said, if somebody did fall into water or, you know, they fell and they really badly hurt their leg, it was winter, it's snowing, I had to get a fire on the go and, and maintain their core body temperature while we're waiting for the emergency services to come. I don't want to, I don't want to piss around. I'll just get it done. Yeah? That's it. That, that's generally it. Um, one more thing that I, that I would keep in here is a cutting tool. And it's this cutting tool that I would keep in here. And this is the, the Hultifer's Heavy Duty. I've done a video on her Facebook. If you haven't seen this on her Facebook, if this, you're watching this on YouTube, jump onto her Facebook and you'll see how I've done these modifications. Um, and, and using a few simple bits and bobs, I've covered three to five Cs cordage, a cutting tool and a combustion device and I've just made this knife better. This is a great knife, absolutely fantastic knife and we're trying it out just now. So within this small pack I've covered all the five C's. I've got my, my cutting tool, my combustion device, my cordage, a container and cover as well as a few other bits and bobs. I've got, you know, my, my sleeping bag and my, eh, sorry, my shemag and my fleece that I've got loads of uses. I've got some more first aid items. I've got my, my survival kit. That is a standalone kit. I could mm -hmm. do a night or two and I can fit a lot of scran in here as well. I do keep scran in there. Mm -hmm. That is a standalone kit. I could do a night or two under that if I had to at a push in reasonable conditions. If I, once I get a fire in that going. 
but like I say, if somebody did get a sore one, I could maintain their core body temperature, manage any mechanical or kind of bleeds, anything like that, while we waited for rescue. A lot better than I could without it. And when it's packed, there's nothing to it. Absolutely nothing to it. Um, I know what they say, the more knowledge you get, the less kit you need. But I need to take certain things into consideration. I have, I, whenever I'm out doing bushcraft, I always have my son with me. That's why I do bushcraft. You know, that's, that's why I do it. I, so I can come out and enjoy the outdoors and stuff like that with him. I'm starting to get my wife and my other kids to come with me. So I need to consider who's in my group um, and how best to keep them safe. And that's something you should consider. Who's out with you? What's their fitness, their knowledge and their ability? And, and, and manage round that. So yeah, cool. Scout pack slash sort of military day sack mentality. Whatever. I've been Stuart. I've been Alan. You have been awesome. He's been Darren. And uh, don't forget if you like what we're doing to like, share and subscribe and all that sort of stuff. Um, and stay tuned for upcoming videos because we've got a giveaway that we want to sort out as well. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.